Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the get command. I have a series on this. I'll put a link up here to the beginning to A. If you're not familiar with it, you will be a little lost because I pick up from where I left off. But uh, this one's going to be how to get a value. I'm going to start in the next one. This is where I left off. And I'm going to make a couple changes to this. I'm going to set this value to 2. And I'm going to change the font to a smaller font. I have a smaller Arial in there. So you can't really see it very well, but I'm going to put a larger number in there later and I need the room. Instead of printing a value, I'm going to just put the command that we're going to send from the Arduino, which is the get command. And we're going to send the value from this number box up here. Do a quick compile. Now I'm going to run the debug on it. Now all we're concerned about is the button in this. I don't really care about the slider so much anymore. Of course, I wanted to leave that at two. We'll refresh, but we're not going to use the slider in this, and we're not going to use this uh, this text value. We're just going to be using the number. And when we send it, we'll get it down here. And you can see we send a 71. And then we send the two, we send four zeros, and then we finish up with the FFs. And anytime you send a value, you're going to send four characters. You're going to send an initial 71 followed by four characters. That will always be true. The maximum value you can send is like four trillion or something like that. It's whatever four bytes put together the largest value is. It'd be all Fs and hex. And then the 71. If I switch this over to the string, the 71 is a Q, and that denotes or tells you that a, that a string has been sent. If we had sent a text, it would be a P. In, last, in the last few examples that I've done, or the last few videos, um, you probably remember that there was a P in front of the word Bill. But when you send zeros, as you could see in there, we could see the zeros, but the Arduino doesn't detect the zeros very well. For this example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a large value in here so we send all four of those sets of data are full of some sort of value. And I picked this value for a reason. In hex, this equates to, or in uh, ASCII, when you convert the number to a string, to a readable string, it converts it to 1, 2, 3, 4. And I chose that on purpose so that we can see the data better in the Arduino. It just makes it more readable. It's, there's no difference. We're still sending this 825,373,492. That's still the value of it, but you'll be able to visually see it better. I'll run a debug one more time before we go to the Arduino. And here's your value. And when I hit this button, it's going to simulate what we're going to send from the Arduino. And you can see we still get the 71, which is the Q. And then we get these values, 34, 33, 32, and 31. And in string value, it equates to 1, 2, 3, 4. So that way, we'll be able to see the data when it comes in a little bit better. Now I'm going to go to the Arduino. Now for the Arduino, just like the last part, I'm picking up exactly where I left off on this. And in this, I have no delays whatsoever. We've eliminated all that by using milliseconds and being able to convert things. Or So we just skip areas. That way the loop keeps functioning over and over and over. But I did have a question. Somebody pointed out that what happens when the milliseconds rolls over? So the milliseconds counts from zero up to that four trillion. It's a, the milliseconds variable itself is four bytes, so it can go up to four trillion. But when it hits that four trillion, it just goes back to zero. Well, when we set this get request milliseconds down here equal to it, if this goes back to zero and this is still sitting at that high, high number, well, milliseconds will never be greater than that, or at least not for a long time, and this will never function. Now, if you want to do the math and figure out how many milliseconds or how many hours that takes to hit that, it's, it's quite a few. But the point is, is well intended that 
there is a chance that this could happen. So I'm going to start adding a little bit here at the top of all of my programs. What I'm going to put is if milliseconds is ever less than the get request milliseconds, and in our code we never set it less than, we make it equal to, and then the milliseconds continues to count up, but we never, it should never be less than that. And so if it is less than that, we're just going to set this equal to zero. So that way when milliseconds rolls over, when it hits the four trillion and goes back to zero, your get request milliseconds will also go back to zero. It will have during that one pause, it'll have a longer delay. And I'm going to do a whole video on this, so I'll explain that a little bit better because there needs to be more in this, a little more correction to, so that you keep the exact same delay. But I just want to set, mention it in this video because this is the first video I've inserted this, and so going forward, it'll be there. This is the only line as far as sending the GET request to the next unit itself. So instead of sending bill, now we're going to send the get n0.val. All is one string. We don't have to escape it or anything. The next is smart enough to figure that out. And then what it's going to do is it's going to send that 71 or the letter Q, because 71 equates to a Q, and the value is going to come back. And then the next part is going to be where we collect the data down here. So we initially set the stage variable to get request. So we send the request to the connection, and then once we're done sending that, we set the stage value to get reply, and then that causes it now to do this instead of this. So when it's set to get request, it's going to skip this, and when it's set to get reply, it's going to skip this. So once we've sent the request, it sets it to reply, and then it comes down here. And then in here it's going to check and see if there's serial available. If there's, if there's data available on the serial port, it's going to collect it and add it to this variable here called data from display. And then once it receives those three FFs, those three sets of FF, it's going to execute this, this down here. And this is where all the logic is going to happen for today's example. Because once it has that FF, then we want to parse out that value and store it in a long now I'm going to go back up to the top and we're going to set the uh, we're going to set the long. Before this we're going to use a union. I'll make a video on union at some point because I'm going to make a set of Arduino tutorials. I have a few over there but nothing on the union. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a variable called get data union. And then we create two variables that this points to. And one is a long called get data long and one is called is a byte array. In other words, an array of four bytes or four memory locations. And both of these variables point to the same locations in memory. So if we read get data long or we read these four bytes, it's the same data. It's just that by setting this up as four bytes, we'll be able to write data to each individual byte because a long is built up of four bytes. So we'll have access to each of these individual bytes. The format is to type in get data union and then the point or a period and then the variable you're wanting to, to do something with. So now we're going to use this union in the loop down below. We're not going to change anything here, we're just going to add to it. So once we have all the data collected, the data from display has received the last three sets of FF, we're going to insert this data into here. I'm going to keep printing out the data variables just like we had in the last example or the last video. So you should be able to build upon that one. Now I've left a line above and below so you can see what data I've added here. So if we make it through here and we've got all the data we want we've, and we have the three FFs so we know that what was sent from the next one is complete, then we're going to go down here. And the first value in it is that 71 that equates to a Q. So we can just check it like this. The substring, the first character, Q, it's a Q. We're going to execute what's in this. Then I add a line on here just to locally print that the returned data is a value. Because you may have another line that has an else. And if it's the P, which is the value that lets you know it's a text instead of a value, then you could put turn value as a string. And then we know we're going to that we're looking at the next four bytes of data. So we're going to loop through integer x equals zero, I, as long as it's less than four, so we're going to use zero, one, two, and three. We're going to take that and loop through the data from display. 
Now once again, I, this is just a for testing purposes for this video, we're going to print whichever one of the four data points we're currently looking at, we're going to print that out too. But here's where we do the actual work. We created this get data union and we define two parts of it. We're going to load the, the array with the values from this data from display. So we're going to take the first value and we're going to copy the second value from data from display and place it into there. Because data from display's first value is the queue. So the data doesn't start until its second value. So we're going to take the second value of data from display and we're going to put it into the get data byte array. And we're going to do that four times. We're also going to print the value as it stands of the get data long. And the reason I'm doing this is you, you'll be able to see in the Arduino serial monitor that it grows, that it gets longer and longer, and we'll be able to pull up a calculator and, and interpret the data and make sure that it is what we think it is. And that's really it, because once you have that, then you can, on this last time through, you'll see that it's the long, we're converting it to a string. But what, in, what we've done is we've taken the string data that's returned, or the, the value that's returned, because it comes in an RS-232, so data is data, it just depends on how you read it, and we've converted it into a long. I'm going to upload this to the Arduino and open the serial monitor and the Nexion display, and we'll see it all work together. Okay, so I have the data running. I'm going to shut off the auto scroll. It's a little easier to watch. We have it running every two seconds. It starts right here. Well, it starts right here. We're send get to the Nexion, so we send that we request the value, and then what's returned is the queue, the signal that it's a value, and 4321, and then the question marks. But you can see I've run it a couple times, and I didn't clear, since I didn't clear it, it's just overriding everything. I need to go back into the Nexion, and, or into the Arduino, and make one little change. Down in this lower area here, I do some cleanup. I set the counter to zero, I reset the data from display. I also have to reset that value, that long. we're just going to set it equal to zero. It can get a little confusing because this is the variable we're focused on, but it's part of a union, so you have to put this in front of it. Okay, so now we're back in. I've got it, so it's, it's resetting the data. Let me hit the auto scroll off. We're sending the get to the nexion. It's returning 4321. The return data value is 52, and you can see that it grows every time. The value that we care about is the final value before it does this again. And this value here, 825373492, should match this value here. Because this is the value that we're sending. And it's stored as a long, so you can use it in that way to manipulate things. But now these values here, this 13108, and these values here, what we're doing is we're sending the values individually as they come in here. And this is the way they come in, 34, 33, 32, 31. And this is the hex. Now this is the decimal value. So I pull up the calculator here and I put in, in hex, 34. In decimal, that equates to a 52. But now 33 does not equate to 13,108. But this value is the addition of these two together. So if I go to my decimal and I put in 13108, hex is 3334, which is 3334. When you're doing this, it all ties together. It just further shows that, as I've said a, a lot of times, you're just sending data back and forth, and then the two devices just know, need to know how to interpret it. And the reason that I chose this big value is this would equate. If we change this now to a two, this should also end up being a 2, and that's going to be our next test here. So I'm going to have to close the debug and change this to a 2. And I'm, I'm going to skip that part. I'll just come back to this screen when I'm done. So now we're back to this where it's 2. When I hit uh, clear, clear this output, we should get it should fill in. Oh, I've got to start the... Let me clear it again. 
turn off the auto scroll. And you can see we sent it out. Now though, turn off the auto scroll. Now though, the data we get back, it's harder to, to interpret. And that's why I chose that larger value. So you could see that it was eight characters. We're still returning eight characters. If you look at the counter down here, it's still eight. But the first value returned is the two, and then it's all zeros after that. So the final value is still two. So you can see that the logic holds, and all I did was change the value in here. If you wanted to, you could put a keypad in here, so you click on it, change the keypad, and then you could change it as much as you want. But I don't think I'm gonna go into that for this video. But I will go back over the Arduino one more time. So the changes that we made on this video is we added this union in here four bytes that are in this long and the four bytes that are in this array are the exact same spots. We just did it because we can access the individual bytes in an array a lot easier than we can the individual bytes in the long. And then I also added this just to make sure that on a rollover, so when the milliseconds hit that four trillion number, it'll go back. The main change we did was this down here. So if that substring is a Q, it means it's a value. We loop through the next four numbers, put it in the data array, which loads up the, the long at the exact same time, and then we just printed out the long. The big thing was, was I forgot to then reset that to zero when we were done. You could do it up here too. You could reset it to zero at either point and that would work just fine. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.